So for this problem, we have air at 200 kilopascal and 52 degrees C, and it travels at a velocity of 305 meters per second, in, enters a insulated duct of varying cross-sectional area. The air exits at 150 kPa and a different temperature of 87 degrees C. At the inlet, the cross-sectional area is 10 centimeters squared and the air behaves as an ideal gas. Determine the exit velocity, the exit cross-sectional area, and the rate of entropy production. So we just had this duct. Whoops, that's a bad looking entrance to the duct like that. And it's changing shape. And we'll just put it like this as inlet and outlet. And uh, we know that it's well insulated and we can introduce a control volume such that coming in at state one some of the properties known as well as at the exit state two and so to help organize the information what we can do is make a table so we can put maybe uh, put the, well you don't just organize a number of different ways let's just put p1 is 200 kPa and P2 over here 150 kPa so the pressure went down when the pressure goes down like that it looks like it's a nozzle a nozzle used to accelerate the flow but let's continue to look at the data so we have the temperature one of 52 degrees C I anticipate we need that in Kelvin 325 Kelvin and the temperature at 2 is 87 degrees C and I anticipate we need that in Kelvin so that's 360 Kelvin now the temperature goes up um, hmm that looks like it's a diffuser in the sense that uh, you're you know decreasing the um, increasing the enthalpy decreasing the kinetic energy from an energy balance point of view all right let's continue to put the information down here so our velocity in is 305 meters per second that's quite high um, very high actually um, let's just proceed we want to calculate the exit speed that's one of the unknowns put a question mark right there uh, we're given the area inlet and that's going to be 10 centimeters squared now you can convert that to meters squared we've done that before remember 100 centimeters is equal to a meter and so this turns out to be 10 times 10 to the minus 4 meters squared all right and then for part B what is that exit cross-sectional area we don't know it and we want it in units of centimeters squared okay um, then the last part C is rate of entropy production but let's not get ahead of ourselves let's see about how are we going to solve for that exit velocity well there's two things that we can do we can do a mass balance for that control volume as well as an energy balance what does the mass balance tell us well the mass flow rate coming in at one is equal to the mass flow rate exiting at two and we just drop all the subscripts it's just the mass flow rate through the system how do you calculate the mass flow rate well if you knew the cross-sectional area at one and the velocity at one you make the product and that gives us a volumetric flow rate at one coming in and we would divide by the specific volume coming in or multiplied by the mass density either way and so we start looking and say uh, hmm, if we also knew the uh, area at 2 and the velocity at 2 and we could calculate the specific volume at 2 we know this equation is true from m dot n equal to m dot out um, we're, we look at this and we, we don't know v2 and a2 so there's two unknowns in this equation the unknown here a2 and v2 so we're we're kind of stuck we just can't do it all with a mass balance we need to go and try to use an energy balance 
So an energy balance, what is that? It's a first law, first law of thermodynamics for that control volume. And what we find is the inlet enthalpy plus the inlet specific kinetic energy is equal to the exit enthalpy plus the exit kinetic energy. Now, whenever we see the, these changes in H, we ask ourselves, can I use constant specific heat? Or do I need to account for variable specific heat? That's the question. If it's constant specific heats, maybe we get the constant value for the specific heat as a function of temperature out of our table A20 in the back of the book. Or maybe we use table A, I think it's 21, let me take a look, 22, table A22 for variable specific heats. But I look again at the problem uh, wording in the problem statement and sometimes if they say, oh, K, use K is equal to this, that's a key indication. If K is given, then the constant specific heat. Nothing's given here, so this is what we're going to go with. We're going to assume that we need to count for variable specific heats, and uh, we're going to use table A22. So we look at this equation, and the only unknown in this equation because these enthalpies are function of temperature, function of temperature, the specific kinetic energy coming in is only a function of the velocity coming in. This is the only unknown. So let's go ahead and calculate for Ke1, that's equal to the 1 half V1 squared. So I can put in 1 half the velocity, 305 meters per second squared, and then I multiply by 1,000 meters squared per second squared is precisely one kilojoule per kilogram conversion factor. And we calculate that the kinetic energy in at state one is 46.5125 kilojoules per kilogram. All right. How about H1? Well, to find H1, we look in the air table A22 at the temperature 1, 325 Kelvin. So we need it at 325 Kelvin. Let's take a look. So we come to table A22. We look down in the temperature column until we find 325 Kelvin. We look across until we find H, and I know I truncated the header up here, but U and H are in kilojoules per kilogram, and we need the H. So there is our H1, 325.31. 325.31 kilojoules per kilogram. Likewise, H2, that's the enthalpy at a temperature of 360 Kelvin. Jump to the table again. Here's 360. 360.58 is our enthalpy, 360.58 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay, so the only unknown is the kinetic energy exiting in this equation right here. And so it's H1 plus Ke1 minus H2. And so that exiting kinetic energy comes in at 11 point two four two five kilojoules per kilogram you can use that to calculate the exit speed because this is one half v2 squared okay so v2 is equal to um, I'm, I'm gonna put uh, 2000 because that takes care of that conversion factor right here times the 11.2425 kilojoules per kilogram and you take the square root of that and what we find I'm gonna to have to write it up here is that V2 comes in at 149.95 really 150 meters per second so it came in at 305 and it went out at 150. It looks like it's a 
slowing down like a diffuser, not a nozzle where it would speed up. But they don't describe this as either a nozzle or a diffuser. They just call it a duct. And so it's not a very good nozzle at all, and it's not a very good diffuser at all either. It's just a duct. Okay. So let's now take a look at part, that was answer for part A. Part B is what is the exit cross-sectional area? Well, since we just solved for the velocity, we can get the area at 2. What we need to get is our specific volumes. Let me just go ahead and get our specific volume at 1. That's going to be RT1 divided by P1. We've done these before, it's 0 0.4664 meter cube per kilogram. And specific volume at state 2, RT2 divided by P2 would come in at 0 0.6888 meter cube per kilogram. So it's like, I, I, I know this one, I know this one. I know the area one, the velocity one, the only unknown is that area two. And so we can solve for that area two and that area two comes in at 30.04 uh, centimeters squared. That's the answer for part B. So part A, energy balance. Part B really we use mass balance and how to calculate the mass flow rates as the volumetric flow rate divided by the specific volume. Now that we have used energy balance, mass balance, we suspect we're going to have to do an entropy balance. What do you mean by entropy balance? Second law. Second law for the control volume. So let me just write it out in the most general form. So we have no accumulation, no depletion is equal to any sum of Q dots divided by the boundary temperature, but this is well insulated. If it's well insulated, there's no Q dots in or out. Okay, so that's zero. And then we have only one mass flow rate in. So I'll just drop the subscript. It's bringing with it its entropy one coming in minus one mass flow rate exiting, same M dot taking with it its entropy exiting S2 and then we have our entropy generation term. So if you want to calculate the rate of entropy production it's equal to the mass flow rate times the exit entropy minus the inlet entropy. Okay so we do have this mass flow rate or we can calculate it. Do I have it already shown? Well if I come back down here I can calculate that mass flow rate m dot is equal to 0 0.6540 kilograms per second. That's all just using m dot 1 information. Okay, so it's like, okay, we've got this one. How about the change in the entropy? Well, since we're using the table A22, then S2 minus S1 is equal to S2 naught minus S1 naught minus R natural log of P2 over P1. This is how to calculate the change in entropy, the property entropy for air, and we're using variable specific heat. So we go back to our table A22 and we get these S2 naughts. Again, this superscript, I call it not, it's a lowercase o, not a zero, like a number, but o, and it indicates low pressure. Most people would just say it's at 1 atm pressure. That's basically it. So when you look at this equation, this is where the increase in pressure, or decrease in the, the change in the pressure is taken into account. Uh, in here, in this equation, this is only a function of temperature. I just look down at 325, and there is S naught. This would be S naught at, uh, whoops, S naught at 1. And this would be S naught at 2, exiting at 360. Okay? So it was exiting at 360, yes. Okay. 
So what we find is that this is equal to the value of 1.88543 out of our table minus the value at initial state 1.78249 minus R 8.314 divided by 28.97 for the molar mass of air times the natural log of the ratio of pressures. So the pressure 2 is 150 kPa. Pressure at 1 is 200 kPa. So we calculate the change in S. Then we multiply it by the mass flow rate and we get the rate of entropy generation to be 0 0.1213 units of kilowatt per Kelvin. And that's our answer for part C. With that, we're done. Thank you.